Welcome back to Cricket for Americans. Nick here. Gabe, the Night Watchman. And Gabe and I, the Wicket Keeper, <laughs> are excited for the video today that we're reacting to. And we're looking at Adam Gilchrist, Billy. And this is a, a legendary former Australia captain, right. former Australia Wicket Keeper, who, according to Wikipedia, redefined the role with his aggra aggressive batting from the left side. This is a guy that we have not. I guess soloed, if you will, profiled, if you will, for a video of his own. So we're excited to check him out today. You know, I like wicket keepers because to me, I feel like just like in baseball, they're the toughest and probably the most important uh, position on the field. I mean, outside of the bowler, right? And if you think about it, it takes a, lot, a toll on your body too. Whether you're in baseball squatting or you're in wickets, you know, behind... In, in cricket, behind the wicket there, squatting, diving. I mean, yeah, you've got to have those fast reflexes. But I think wicket keepers make a good make good captains, Nick, because they get to see the entire field from where they're on. They get to see the batter's reaction, you know what I mean? What the batter's trying to do. Like, you get such a, a, a good perspective of the game. And, you know, it's funny because Gilchrist is, is, is synonymous with, uh, like, the epitome of of what great wicket keeping is he's one of the, the the greatest australian wicket keepers of all time slash captains of all time and i remember when tim payne became captain people were like it's not like he's you know what i mean uh, 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 uh gilchrist right and, and like you can't even compare tim payne to adam gilchrist but tim payne also ended up being the right guy at the right time and i believe it was because not because of his skills with the bat all right he was a decent wicket keeper but it's because he understood the game and i think that more than anyone else Wicked keepers understand the game. Uh, uh, let us know too, because in, in the chat, I'm not sure how many uh, wicked keepers there's been that's been captains in Australia. Uh, I think Tim Payne might have been. Ah, I can't remember. Somebody might might, might have mentioned that that he made such an illustrious list. I don't know if it was just because he was a captain or because he was a wicked keeper that was captain. But think about a lot of the captains yeah. out there from MS Doni, right? right? He was a wicked keeper. You just get a different perspective of the game. What the you know what the bowlers are trying to do because they're bowling to you. Am I you wrong? Know? Isn't Josh Butler the the white ball captain? Josh right? Butler, white ball captain for England. That's a good point. So I just think it get, right. It just puts you in a position where you understand. The, the the what the bowlers are trying to do because obviously you you you're one of the guys out there catching the bowlers and you definitely know what the batter's gonna do because you're the closest one to the batter to yeah. the batsman. Well, you got to take more of a responsibility as a fielder because so much of it is on you. Besides the bowler, obviously, but as a fielder, you're right there, not just in the center. You got the gloves on for a reason. You're gonna be in most of the action. Even a stump's gonna save your team if you can get that in there. Run out, you're gonna be first person there, hopefully to get that. I mean, Donnie's so good at that, right? Taking it and just shooting it right at the bales if it's offline or whatever. But the wicket keeper, that's who I would think would be most strategically the best position for a captain. You know, I like myself having a bowler as a captain. People are, don't really like that idea, but I like it because they're also in the middle of the middle of the action. But talking about baseball. They don't have captains per se besides New York or whatever, okay. but a lot of managers are former catchers, yes. right? Because they take that responsibility. Again. They have this, they have a relationship with the with the pitchers, right. even though they're not a pitcher, so they kind of get all aspects of it. And so it's pretty similar to that. I'm just reading up some stuff about Gilchrist as you're talking. He was one of those Australians that was on the team and they won three straight World Cups. Ooh. Our video today is going to look at his 149 that he had won those World Cups. And the World oh Cup coming up close or soon this fall. It was quite appropriate. But also, I like this part right here. It says, like Sashin, he was known for walking when he figured he was out, even if the umpire did not agree. That's Could you imagine? Like, what happens? Is he just, I'm not turning around because I know I'm out because I know you're wrong? Or does they eventually say, come on, Gilly, you're good. Oh, okay, my bad. And he gets back in there. You know what? <laughs> to me, that is the epitome of what a real competitor is. That is, to me, is is... I always said to myself, and I don't to be to, to be perfectly candid, I never thought I lost, right? Even when I lost, <laughs> and I was in a fight, right? Like like in boxing, I talk about street boxing, not street fighting or whatever. But I never thought I lost. I mean, obviously, I got dropped, and you know what I mean. I got my snack box rocked. Just say, thanks, Jesse. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but throw it out, throw it out, uh, But you know, there was a fight I remember, and I was a huge Tito Trinidad fan, right? Huge Cheeto Trinidad. And Trinidad fought Oscar De La Hoya. Now, this was a Don Keen special. And for those of you that don't know who Don Keen is around the world, look it up. 
he's been a part of some controversial decisions in boxing. And Nick, De La Hoya, it was his first loss against Tito Trinidad. How do you lose a fight where you land 120 more punches than the other guy? It's not like he got knocked down, not knocked out or whatever. He, it was a master class. Even I, as a Trinidad fighter, part Puerto Rican said he got demolished. He got schooled. And like it was a shocking, one of the most shocking upsets in a, a boxing history, right? Because it's just how lopsided the fight was. But my point was, Trinidad afterward like was like crying, acting like he won the fight. And I'm like, deep down inside, you know you didn't win that fight. And I would just love for once for a professional athlete to come out and say, yeah, we didn't earn that. Whether you're, it's yeah. in boxing, whether it's in a controversial uh, 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 call, a touchdown, anything. In baseball, could you see a, a, a baseball player or a basketball player, anybody saying, no, I didn't get fouled there. LeBron, I didn't take my 18th step there. I know you're a Laker fan, but listen, how many steps did LeBron take with that travel? And it's like, how many? Come on. It's like six steps. Count. Come on. The travel... These athletes, about how long does it take for us to get to the reaction? How about how long is that? <laughs> well, Cotton. But you know what I mean? Like, walking is almost like being, like, I'm so good and I'm so, I'm such a competitor that even when, when, even when you mess up, I won't take that. And we're talking to the umpires. And I am, dude, that's true sportsmanship. It's, it's ultimate class. And the, I'll take it a step further. Yes, that's very impressive. I, I hate when people in sports will do whatever it takes, light cheat and steal to win because they're going to say what everyone else is, right? I'll take it a step further to the fact where the fans don't berate that person for being honest. Like right. They respect it. They appreciate it. They acknowledge right. it. Um, and it's not a big deal. Like, yes, he was out. He admitted he was out. He walked away. Could he have got away with it? Maybe. But we're not going to hold it against him. To me, that's just... That's mind blowing because you don't see that enough times in sports, no. and I wish you did because it would, you know, if everyone started doing that. I mean, yeah. now at the same time, as a fan, I want my player to argue as much as possible <laughs> to try to get the call reversed, which very rarely happens. But think about it; these guys are role models, and what are yeah. they teaching? Sportsmanship, right? That kid that's watching Gilly is gonna say, or watching Asasha is going to say, that's the way you carry yourself. You know what I mean? You you play the game the right way. Yeah. You don't, you know what I mean, uh, uh, cheat or you don't. Uh, uh, you walk when you know you're out. I mean, man, it, that's a hat tip right there. Oh, Gilly, I love it. It's super impressive. So we're going to go ahead and check out this video. This little highlight reel here. If you like our reaction anyway, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And it doesn't look like he's going to be walking anytime early in this video. Not at a buck forty nine there, Cotton. Oh my goodness. I'm like, buck forty nine? Can we get one fitty? Oh. One bounce. Who did he just remind you of with that swing there? Very Super very reckless. The By the way, angry. eight for oh. It's like that was his first over, I think. <laughs> he has one of the highest strike rates in test too. Dude. Now, this is ODI, obviously. He Swinging at everything. That's for shit pot right there. Not just that. Yeah, absolutely. But it's easy going. Like, it's an easy fluid motion for him. He's got... He's not trying power. to get out of his shoes. He's got power. Like just, just... Cut it. That was just easy. Oh! Domingano! That's just... Oh. Just so you know, when we go to our uh, game out there in the IPL, well, I should say, is it still called IPL? No, Major League Cricket. I'm not. I'm not giving back the ball. <laughs> you have to. What are they gonna do? Come get it? Yes. They don't know Americans. <laughs> it's got 50 of the first 70 runs. You gotta be kidding me. Oh! Wow! They can't even track that ball. You gotta love the six. Ew! Just oh, the pumping. The manager is saying, "Get away from him!" You almost feel bad for Shalak at this point. That was second deck. That was a beautiful shot. That was very. That was over. Look at that! Look at that form. Just went the other Look way. Look at that with form. It. Look at how calm he keeps his body. 
He he readjusts his his, uh, his shoulder, his elbow. Look how easy it is. Because you've been seeing him pull some. And look at that. I mean, it's so awkward when you're trying to learn to hit the other way. Wow. Wow, that's interesting. Ah! Century? Dude, he's got a hundred out of the hundred forty-eight. Holy cow! Fastest ever in the final. Now the cool thing is, his partner understands. Hey, he's in the zone. Cause I'm at forty-eight too, by the way. Yeah. But he's like, go ahead and get it. Well, if that, there might be some extras too. He might be able. To Who, who's the partner? Is that Watson? Oh, what a catch! No, it didn't carry. Malinga celebrated. Sangakara said no. Wow. So the car said, nah, I didn't catch it. That's sportsmanship as well. I'm confused. What? Watch, because when he died, when he dove, the the ball uh, fell out of his glove. And it happened so quick. Go back and watch it. But I love that's why he was shaking the head. Like, no, I didn't catch it clean. That's what I thought he was saying. But Man, I'm like, I thought he caught it. Watch it. Go back and watch it. So it looks like a clean catch. And watch when he rolls. He said, nah, I didn't get all of it. Malinga celebrated. Catches it and then no. see how it oh, comes out right there when he the last second. Man. You don't see that in American sports. I caught it. Uh oh. Oh. Buckner. Oh, Buckner. Oh, no. Please don't tell me he w he went out at 149 because he got Bucknered. <laughs> the nervous 149. The infamous. Oh! Six joke there for sure. How many rows back? Oh, just the last seven. Dispatch that with authority. That's gone a long way up. Don't get that gone far. One knee. No, I was gonna say, is he gonna muscle that one over the the boundary too? Oh! Oh! He tried that full toss yes. garbage on me. That was almost gonna hit him in the. The other side of the hip. <laughs> so I got you. That's gotta be caught. That's gonna be caught. Man under it. Well, the Sri Lankans have finally got him. Great innings. One of the great innings in World Cup history. Oh my! Okay, this this is my question. All right. Which World Cup is this? Because it's against Sri Lanka. This is 96. Sri Lanka won that World Cup. I can't remember if they played against Australia. I'm going to have you share your thoughts as I look this up. Well, I didn't realize how strong he was. And I think it's the same thing with Dhoni, right? When you look at Dhoni, you don't see those massive tree trunks for legs. You know what I mean? And I think that... Wicked, wicked keepers are deceptively strong because think about it. You're you're down there, man. You're squatting the you know the entire time. Some, you gotta have that muscle. That, for sure. AB right. AB was a, a a wicked keeper. The billiards right. Uh, the alien. So I mean, you got those. The power comes easy because to your point, he was just flicking his wrist at some point and putting it out. Um, it was a masterful, masterful innings there by uh, Gilchrist. I feel bad for the Sri Lankan bowlers, honestly. Um. You know, Malinga gets him there, and the wicket keeper lets it fall. But, I mean, it was such a tough catch, and when he dove, you could just see it. The ball came out of his glove. Man, I love the fact that there was That's, that amount of sportsmanship there. It's crazy because we were just talking about class, right? Right, right, right. You don't ever see that. No, not in American sports. What are you kidding I mean, me? Outside of cricket. You, and you definitely don't see it in, in football, in soccer. Oh, stop it. Stop it. Those guys, listen... Listen, there, one of the things, you know, my, my history with football simply because it's Savannah's family. And and my wife's for everyone plays football, everyone watches football. You know, they've got like five, six people, seven people in their family who've been pros. Her nephew currently plays for like the, I think it's the Chicago Fire or something like that. I can't remember the name of the franchise. One of the MLS teams out here. But my point is, those people, I mean, honestly, and I even said like, dude, seriously? Like, like, well, man, you know, you got to get the call. Like, like, in acting classes, acting, Neymar could win an Oscar. 
Neymar could absolutely win an Oscar. You ever seen that dude plop? Are you kidding me? You love it. Are you kidding me? Listen, Neymar, I think he might he 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 might rival the 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 the, the what's one of the best dramatic actors you can think of? You know, Leonardo DiCaprio. DiCaprio's. He might rival DiCaprio. I think Neymar won his Oscar before He's DiCaprio sister. did. What? I'm serious. Oh, I don't think I don't think Neymar's on the books. <laughs> Um, I think I think uh, La La Land has more Oscars than Neymar has. Oh my gosh! And they had it for a second. So this was the 2007. So I I didn't think it was 96 because it seemed a little more recent than that. This was 2007 World Cup where he went off and they won that World Cup against Sri Lanka quite handedly. Wow! They uh, they were able to chase it in the no something must have happened because Sri Lanka stopped the 36th over and they didn't get bowled out. And then they went to the 38th. I'm not sure what happened there. But regardless, Gilchrist got this 149. He carried the team there. And then also on the bowling side, I'm not sure I read this correctly. That must have been something else. It's like Lee McGraw had a good day, but he just got himself the one wicket. Was that was that Shane Watson that opened up with him? Because they said the two left handers. I couldn't tell. Hayden. No, it was Matthew Hayden. Matthew Hayden. Shane Watson came down and later Malinga on. Malinga did get him. Malinga got himself two of the four wickets. Oh, Malinga. And they must have lost the wicket from a run out too. The dreaded run out. Yep, right there. Ricky Ponting got run out after scoring 37. But to do it on the biggest stage, the World Cup stage, is is extremely impressive. If I'm not mistaken, this is the third of their three in a row. And this guy, to have your opener say, I got it. Dude. To have your opener Dude. get more than half of your runs, like, I got this, guys. We're good. In 36 overs, they put almost 300 runs. And you, it's, you, it's got to be such a great feeling when you're a teammate and you're like, ooh, Gilly's feeling good today. We can sit back and relax. It's not going to be one of those fast shower situations from like, uh, you know, the 83 Indian team where he's like, what's his face? Yeah, can't up, even get dead. Yeah, like, what? what do you mean? Dad can't playing. get more than five seconds in the shower. Uh, you're up. I'm batting six. You're up. <laughs> like, are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, you know, you can understand why we have some spoiled Australia fans. Just being honest, look at this lineup. It's an embarrassment of Richard. Matthew Hayden, Gil Chris, Ricky Ponton, Andrew Simons. Dude, they got Shay Watson batting seventh. Are you kidding me? Mm. But it's about six, seventh there. One, two, fifth. three, four, five, oh, fifth, sorry. Michael Clark, I mean, dude, Michael Hussey did not even bat in that in, in that match. Are you kidding me? It's an embarrassment of Mitch. And then look at the bowling. Glenn McGraw. Uh, who else was it? Well, see, even the bowling guys that I don't recognize the names too well. I've heard of Brad Hogg, but I don't know right. him too much. Right. Nathan Bracken, don't know. Sean Tate, I've seen him in a few highlights, but don't know too much. Glenn McGraw. So it's not like you can say like, oh, they had, I mean, and let me know if I'm wrong. It, yo, those guys are all legendary bowlers. I have no idea. They still get the job done. You know what? That's a good question. We should put it up on a poll. But what do you think is the epitome in cricket of the 1929 Yankees? And if you don't know what the 1929 Yankees are, that is like literally in baseball lore known as Murderer's Row. They I would call say it last year's SRH. SRH. <laughs> you know, Murderer's Row, and the reason was because they would murder pitches, and there were pitchers, and there were no outs in that lineup. The 1929 Yankees were absolutely disgusting. Where I mean, you got Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, and uh, Mickey Mantle, and uh, oh. There's so many Hall of Famers in that one uh, a lineup. It was what? Wow, I'm a Yankees fan. Uh, Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, Mickey Mantle, and uh, Roger Maris. All in the same lineup, guys. These guys are all Hall of Famers. What lineup in cricket? Let us know. Test, ODI. Uh, I, I don't like to even say T20 because, you know, people get upset. Has that been long enough for T20 or whatever? But what lineup was considered one of those lineups where everybody in there was an absolute Hall of Famer and it was just disgusting? Well, I'm looking at these scores and cause I, my first thought was say like the 1970s West Indies, right? I mean, that bowling lineup was absolutely bowling disgusting. Was control. Yeah. But from what, as far as most runs comparison disparity, looks like this 2003 Australia team, they beat India by 125 runs. Ew! Ew! Oh. 234 all out. And I'll show you put themselves 359. 2003, you would have had Shane Warren on there. Uh, Watson would still be playing. Uh, McGraw. Ooh. 2003 World Cup. 
And I mean, let us know. You guys are obviously the experts in, in, in it. But what is that 1929 Yankees? What's Murder's Row? What's that lineup, that team that's like, yeah, everybody in there is a Hall of Famer. They're all disgusting. They had Gilchrist, Matthew Hayden, Ricky Ponting. They only they need four batters. <laughs> Ricky Ponting went crazy for 140. Oh, my gosh. Did not bat. Darren Lehman, Michael Bevin. Ba Ma oh, yeah, Michael Bevin. So I'm not sure if it's fair Andrew because Dude, Ricky Ponting lost his mind. Uh, Glenn McGraw, Brett Lee. Brett Lee. Holy Glenn McGraw, cow. McGraw. I mean, dude. There's Hogg again right there. Obviously, uh, si Simons. Simmons. Is it Simmons or Simons? It's Simons. Simons. And, and you know, they, they went against some guys that weren't slouches either. Tindolkar, Savog, Gangly, um, Dravid. Dude, you, that's you a lineup right there. Holy cow. That's four Hall of Famers right there. That's a bowler. I mean, it's, it's no slouch right there, but they, they took it to them. They really, really did. And if you look at the bowling side, Glenn McGraw, three wickets. Ooh. Simons, two wickets. Brett Lee, two wickets. I mean, that's Disgusting. that's got to be one of the best. Let us know. Let us know. Answer this guy's question. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And tell us your favorite Gilchrist moment if you have just one. Until next time. That six runs.